In the United States, at least one in four women will be raped or will fend off a rape attempt during her lifetime. Since rape often goes unreported, this statistic may actually reflect a much lower rate of sexual assault than really exists in the country. Even so, the fact that one in four women in our society report being raped or having had to fend off a rape attempt sends a powerful message about the way our society treats women. The problems are not limited to our society, though. Our entire culture is based on the objectification of everything around us. Part of the problem is that we identify ourselves primarily as consumers in the modern manifestation of this culture. But there were problems even before our social and physical landscapes began drowning in the excrement of trendy suburbanites. Throughout its history, our culture has terrorized women into submitting to the wills of rich white men. I believe the most recent officially recognized witch burning was a murder that took place in 1895 against Bridget Cleary, but the bulk of these horrific acts were committed between 1450 and 1750, which the historians of Western civilization have deemed the Renaissance, or the dawning of the Age of Reason. It was supposedly a time of great social progress on which our modern culture was founded, but for women who had their flesh torn from their bodies with red-hot metal pinchers, or had their breasts cut from their bodies before being burned alive in front of an angry mob, it was not a time of social progress. It was a descent into a horrifying time of unimaginable torture and terror. Now it's true that many men were also accused of witchcraft and suffered incredible displays of public humiliation, torture, and murder, but the ratios of women to men executed was as high as 15 to 1 in some countries, and rarely can one find instances of witch-burning regimes where the total ratio of burned women to men was less than 3 to 1, or 75% women. The effect of burning witches was to strip women of their natural powers that lay outside the understanding of either the religious or educated thinkers of the day, and to transform them into passive victims of masculinity. Speaking of religion, before the so-called Age of Reason rolled around, the Church was perhaps the closest thing to an overarching authority during the feudal period of Western civilization, which preceded the Renaissance. And as far as the Church was concerned, women were the property of their fathers until they were given away to their husbands. Similar notions of male ownership of women existed during pre-feudal times as well. In Roman times, in Greek, and even Egyptian times, the concept of male ownership of women seemed to follow wherever civilizations popped up in the Western world, and for that matter in the East as well. Women were openly bought and sold in China well into the 20th century. So it seems clear that the objectification of women and the terrorism inflicted against those who exercised any power beyond that which they were granted as an object in some man's tool chest has been a part of this culture since the beginnings of history. But has it always been a part of every culture? Certainly every civilized culture has had these sort of problems in one form or another, and since the civilized perceive all living things as objects that can be bought and sold, it's no surprise that women have been and continue to be the victims of cultural objectification. Even in modern civilized societies, women have price tags hanging over their heads. If a man is willing and able to use physical force against a woman to get what he wants, and if he is willing and able to pay the fees of a talented criminal defense attorney and perhaps some costs associated with a potential civil suit, nothing can stop that man from making that woman the object of his desire. Not even the woman herself, unless she is willing and able to hire a talented criminal defense attorney capable of defending her right to defend herself. In a culture that so objectifies living things that we have vacuumed 90% of the large fish out of the world's oceans since 1950, it's hard to imagine that the rate of rape of human women will ever fall much lower than it is today, when one in four women reports being raped or having had to fend off a rape attempt during their lifetimes. 
We need more than just a political revolution. What we need is a cultural and social revolution in which we rediscover who we truly are. We need to begin to worship Mother Earth again instead of some imaginary father figure who lives in the sky and is never anywhere to be found. We need to worship Mother Earth again and we need to recognize living things are living things, not simply objects to be used.